so as I said, um, the heading is extending 2D vectors and uh, we looked at thinking in three dimensions before, but on Tuesday we didn't really think about vector language, we just thought about that coordinate system. Do you remember that? Okay. Now we're kind of going to be in parallel to that, <laughs> pardon the pun, but I want us to get back into formal vector notation, hence what you can see on the board here. Let's see how much you recall. Three different ways to represent a vector in 2D. And I've even given you the names which I'll conveniently start with C. Uh, what does it look like when you describe the coordinates of something in two dimensions? What do you actually write? Brackets. You got your brackets, right? And then it's x, x comma y. No big deal. We've been doing that for years and years and years. Component form and column form we, of course, only introduced recently. Uh, if you wanted a component form of the position vector that gets you to x comma y, what would you write? x, i, and i is our, let's, let's remember, right? i is our, uh, what do we call it? It's got a special name, right? This guy here. It's a vector, but it's not just any vector. It's the, it's the unit vector, and in particular, we also sometimes call it the basis vector, because it's a unit vector, but in a particular orthogonal direction that we're interested in, right? Namely, in this case, the x direction. Uh, x, i plus y. y. J, the other one, right? That's fine in the y direction. And then lastly, uh, column form. We're still going to use brackets just like in coordinates, but what do we do differently? Yeah, I mean, it's called column form, right? So we pop it in this uh, vertical arrangement here. And for, you know, uh, for funsies, we often actually call these things down the bottom. We also call them matrices. That thing's called a matrix, but that's sort of a, um, it's a, terminology thing you don't really have to worry about but those of you who do any kind of mathematics at university when you do that topic called linear algebra they might stop calling these column form they'll just say draw a matrix make it like this etc okay now we are going to as the title suggests extend this into 3d vectors and mercifully this part is really easy instead of x comma y you're going to have we saw this last time right x comma y comma Z. And you can sort of take everything that you've seen here, and there's really not much thinking involved to say, well, I think this is what it would look like if we consider a third dimension in addition to the two that we're familiar with. Now, just to buy you a little bit of time to jot this down, right? Once you've got this coordinate system, this, this way of expressing vectors in three dimensions, everything that you've learned in the, the foundation of working with 2D vectors stays the same. So arithmetic, for example, there are three operations that you can do with 2D vectors. What were they again? Three operations? Start with the easy one. Starts with an A. You add, <laughs> add vectors together. In fact, even, even component form is already the addition of vectors, right? There's one in the I direction, one in the J direction, one in the K direction, X, Y, and Z. So there's addition, opposite of addition is subtraction, thank you. And then the last, just purely like arithmetic that we focused on was when we took a scalar and we multiplied, right? Now, you remember how to do addition, subtraction, and scalar multiplication in 2D vectors. It's really straightforward. You hardly even have to think. You just separate out each of the components and you just address them. Do the, you compute one at a time, right? It's like, oh, I'm just gonna add all of the i vectors. I'll collect the i terms, collect the j terms. Now you're gonna collect the k terms, right? Um, same with sc scalar multiplication, you get the idea. So that's all exactly the same as it was before. Um, we then took the distance formula. Do you remember this? Now going back to our um, vector notation, if I had some vector a, how would I talk about the magnitude of that? What would I put around this? I put, Absolute value signs, right? Which we've also remembered from complex numbers. It's the modulus, right? If I square that, because Pythagoras talks about the squares of hypotenuses and sides in the triangle, then what are we going to get for, say, um, for say that, that three-dimensional vector, xi plus yj plus zk? What would the result be on the right-hand side? Yeah, fantastic. I'm just squaring everything, just like uh, Pythagoras used to do in two dimensions, right? Now, what we want to do is focus on how do we use this thinking? How do we take problems which we would have thought, okay, uh, I, I know what this looks like in 2D, but what happens when we add this third dimension into it? And what you'll see is, and this is why we call it extending 2D vectors, what you'll see is often a lot of this problem just boils down to 
taking the three dimensionally out of it, three dimensionality out of it, and just seeing the, the 2D components, pardon the pun, the 2D parts of the problem that we can then solve in the ways we used to. Okay? So let's have a look at this. Calculate the angle that this vector, which we're calling A, lowercase a, which goes from the origin to a point, capital A, calculate the angle that that makes with the x-axis where you've got some coordinates for A. Okay? Um, and we're going to need our calculators to get to the nearest degree. So, place we should always start with any kind of problem that involves geometry is a diagram. Thank you, Tarun. Five stars. Now, uh, you might remember, before you start drawing your diagram, you might remember I showed you a canonical version, like a, a classic version of our three-dimensional diagram with Z going up and X to some you know, fashion coming out at you and Y going to the right. Now, this is the most common version that you'll see, but in the two examples we're going to have a look at this morning, I just want you to push on the fact that just like we did on the computer, right? sometimes this direction is very helpful, Perspective is very helpful. Sometimes actually looking at it from a different angle is more useful. Now, this is the one you'll see most often, but for this particular problem, I actually think it'd be helpful if we spin this around a little bit. And I want you to think about, as I draw it, why this perspective might be a little more useful because of the particular coordinates I've given to you. So I'm going to put Z there. I'll leave that one as it normally is. I'm going to put X in that direction and y in that direction. Okay. Now, as we start to put together this diagram, I'm going to sort of rehearse for you how we try and measure on there, like how do I represent 2, 3, 6, right? I want you to think about why I oriented it in this way and how I drew that conclusion, because you're going to have to make decisions about, I get coordinates, which way is the most helpful to draw my diagram? 2, 3, 6, where am I going to put it? What's the first thing you might put to clearly represent where 2, 3, 6 is going to be? Xiao? X equals 2. X equals 2. Fantastic. Let's just go through the components in order. You can see I put X in this direction. So let's go ahead and put something and then we'll specify that that's 2. Okay? So there's my 2. Where am I going to go next? I'm going to go 3 in that direction. That's where I've, that's my orthogonal direction over there. So I'm going to try and do my best parallel over there. 3. And then finally, got an orange here, the J, which in this case is 6, is of course going to go straight up, in the Z direction, right? So let's make sure that's accordingly, oh, that looks about right. Okay, you happy with that? So we've uh, concatenated, put together our X, our Y, and our J, which means that this is where I'm suggesting A is. So where is A, the vector, little a, going to go? Yeah, it's going to go from our origin. Right? All the way up to here. Is that alright? This is what I'm going to mark in as A. Has anyone worked out yet why I've oriented it in this way? Why this might be, a, I mean it's not the only way, but why it's helpful. Hmm. What do you reckon, Pa? Yeah, very good. So, as we sort of, um, Pan's got it exactly right. I can see the base of the triangle down here that is going to be useful to me. In fact, I can see all the pieces much more easily. You remember, we actually did this example. When we uh, oriented it in the classic position, what you're looking face on, or sort of diagonal on, as it were, is this first octant, right? The first octant where everything is positive. Does that make sense? So, if you put something in the first octant, it's coming directly out towards you, which makes it actually quite hard to draw diagrams, right? Even if it's a fairly long vector, right, even if, here we go, you have a long object, right, if it is coming directly out at you, you don't see very much of it, which makes your diagram not very useful. Does that make sense? Like you can imagine our 2, 3, 6 vector is sort of poking straight out, so the actual line you're going to draw is just not very long, so it's hard to just make constructions on it. Yeah? Okay, so there's my little a vector. What am I trying to find? The angle that a makes with the x-axis. Here's the x-axis over here. So if I were to draw this angle in, I guess it would be here, right, between little a and the x-axis, but I think I still need a little bit more information to make clear where exactly that thing is going. In particular, all angles have to sit on a plane of some kind, right? Um, for example, on your page or on the wall. So the question for you, and I'm going to get you to Turn to your friend for a second and have a think about this and see if you can represent it. Which plane is this angle sitting on? 
If you're trying to describe this to someone else, because you need to describe it to your own brain where that angle is, because that's going to decide what constructions we're about to do, um, and then what calculations we do. Which plane is the angle we're about to calculate sitting on? I'm going to give you 30 seconds, turn to the person next to you. How would you describe it verbally, where this thing is going to go? Okay, have a think. So, I am so glad I gave you some time to discuss that because I knew you'd have some different ideas, but I'm just going to transparently admit to you, I didn't know you'd have that many different ideas. In fact, I hardly ever heard the same answer twice as I went around. Uh, I don't know if you have the same experience with this. Here's what I'm going to start off with. Because I heard this as people were kind of struggling to articulate what was happening. Um, but it's immediately problematic. Um, I heard some people say, oh, it's in the Z direction, or the X direction, or the Y direction. Now, I just let me remind you what the question was, right? The question was, what plane, what plane is the angle that we're interested in, what is it sitting on, right? Why can't I just say it's the X direction, or the Y direction, or the Z direction? Why aren't any of those an answer which actually is meaningful in this context? It's not, say it again, Jayu. The x direction, or the y direction, or the z direction, that's not even a plane. In 2D, we can say that's a direction, and we know what's going on, right? But for example, if I said the z axis, right? There is an infinite number of planes that go through the z axis. Do you agree, right? In fact, I'm going to take a leaf out of my own book, right? This is where, by the way, and I'm so glad some of you did this, but not very many of you, right? get something physical out, something that can exist in three dimensions to explain what is going on. So here, this is one of the planes that sits, or passes through rather, the z-axis, right? But guess what? So does this one here, and so does this one, and so does this one. I can rotate around through. So saying the z-direction, I need more information. A plane is a two-dimensional object, so you at least have to provide a second piece of information. Now, I then heard people say, or well, maybe it's ZY, or maybe it's XY. I'm going to give you a clue here, right? It's none of the coordinate axes paired up together. Because the whole point of it being 2, 3, 6 is that we are now no, no longer sitting on just one of them at any given point. Does that make sense? One of them would have to be one of the coordinates, which I probably should have written for us. One of them would have to have been 0 in order to be sitting on, say, the XY plane which number would have to be 0 to be sitting on the xy plane, which is the flat one? Z would have to be 0, wouldn't it? Think about that, because that means I'm, I'm flat on the ground, I'm not up and I'm not down. right? So if I was 2, 3, 0, I'd be on the xy plane, because there's no z to worry about. Yeah. If I was 2, 0, 6, 2, 0, 6, which plane am I on? The numbers I'm providing to you are an x number and a z number, so I'd be on the think, I'd be on the XZ plane, right? Whichever numbers I've provided to you, okay? So it's not any of those that are orthogonal. Here's the way I would explain it. For starters, um, which axis am I asking you to measure this angle, or rather this vector, to? Which axis? The X axis, right? So I'm going to use the X axis as my point of reference. But like I said, there's an infinite number of planes that all go through the X axis. Do you agree? Now what I need to do is, for example, if I started from the ZX plane, if I rotate over, so I'm sort of leaning now on my side, right? Well, not quite on my side, but oblique, right? I'm now heading off in the direction of A. So here's the way that I think we should draw this, okay? Colors at the ready if you've got them, right? If I draw this triangle in here, and I need names for this thing, right? I'm gonna, since I've called that A, I'll call this B over here. This triangle I've just now made, O, A, B, it's at an angle, right? It's at an angle, but the triangle itself is right angled. Do you agree? Yeah. Right? Do you see why it's right angled? This part here is off at an angle, but this is going to be orthogonal to the x-axis. Is that okay? So this right angle triangle here, I can work with. And that triangle is sitting on the plane where I'm going to measure this angle. So now I've kind of got the pieces together. I've already got one of the lengths in this triangle, namely, actually I could have just left it there, that's fine. This is two. Do you agree? So I've got one of the sides in a right angle triangle. I just need... Think about this, I'm looking for an angle. In a right-angled triangle, what do I need 
What's the quickest, laziest way to get to the angle that I want? Right angle triangle, already have one side. What else could give me the angle? Cosine. Cosine? Calvin, you went to cosine like straight away. Why did you say cosine? Because you can find the length of a very nice. Okay, so did you see, and that's why we sort of, I reminded you of this clue right at the beginning. If you worked out the magnitude of this vector, and this is why we did the distance formula at the end of last lesson, right? If you have the magnitude of that vector, that's the hypotenuse in this OAB triangle. Are you with me? That's how I'm going to do it. And then this side here is adjacent to my angle. This is the hypotenuse, hence cosine. Following so far? All right. Okay, question. Can't you just do, um, can't you just find the length of BA by pi hat? BA here. Okay, so. That's also right angle. Yeah, all right, think about this carefully. So, and it's suggesting BA here, which is the hypotenuse of, what color should I use? Is it the hypotenuse of yeah. this triangle? Do you agree with that? I think so too. If you have a think about it, right? Um, this is going to be two dimensional. Pythagoras, I guess. This one does require three-dimensional Pythagoras. This is the delightful thing about having so many in the class. Between you and the person sitting next to you, I want one of you to go this way. Let's go with Calvin's first suggestion for what it's worth because I wanted to practice it. It's the one I have in my working, okay? And then I want the person who's alternate in the pair to work out this one. You're not going to be using cosine if you work out AB, are you? You're going to use... You can use tan because it's opposite on adjacent. Make sense? If we've done it right, we should end up with the same angle for A, O, B. Let me give you three or four minutes. Off you go. Come on, you should be there for one of them. I did both. Let's go. Who's got an angle for me? 73. 73? Yeah. Did the person next to you also get 73? Uh, where did I, my black mark go? Okay. This is, by the way, our approximation. Now, by the way, <laughs> fun fact. Thank you, Anged, for providing this, um, this suggestion here. Can you tell, can you tell, just like, we, we've been trying to put you guys, uh, doing this interest piece, right? We've been kind of trying to put you guys in the position that Mrs. Lees and I are in when we try and learn new things outside the syllabus, right? Um, rather than being taught it directly by somebody. Can you tell which one of these methods this particular question was crafted to go toward? Can you tell just by looking at my working? It was crafted, of course you can do it the second way, there's probably a third, fourth, fifth. It was crafted for this way. How did you tell? How could you tell? It just comes out oh look, the numbers are so nice, right? Now by the way, in Pythagoras' theorem, we first learned that if you have a right angle triangle and you have three numbers that do this a squared plus b squared equals c squared thing, we would call those numbers a, b, and c. Does anyone remember what the name of those three numbers would be? It's a phrase, actually. They're called a Pythagorean triplet, or a triad, or a triple, whatever, right? Now, because we're in three dimensions, right, you don't get Pythagorean triples anymore because you don't have three numbers that go into Pythagoras. You have, count them, one, two, three, four numbers. So, fun fact, these are called Pythagorean quadruples, and two, three, six, seven is one of them. Um, obviously, it still works out when you get a third, but it's fine. Make sense? Okay. 